Okay, in this video, we are gonna use Euler's formula to arrive at some trig formulas. So specifically, we're gonna end up with the sine of a plus b and the cosine of a plus b. Once you have those, you can use other things to get all the other formulas that you might need. Um, so let's kind of get started with that. First thing we need to know is we need to know what Euler's formula is. So it's a really special relationship. It comes up a lot of places in math. It says that e to the i times theta is cosine of theta plus i times sine of theta. Um, so look at that, that's pretty weird. We got two trig functions, we got uh, e, the exponential function, we have i, the imaginary number, and then we have a theta. Um, so one of the first things you usually do with this, in case this is the first time you're ever seeing this, is you usually plug in pi. Um, so if I let theta equals pi, then uh, rewrite this, I get e to the pi times i is cosine of pi plus i times sine of pi, and then we kind of have to think of the values maybe from the unit circle. So uh, e to the pi times i, the uh, cosine of pi is negative one. And then it's plus i times the sine of pi is zero. So this thing simplifies down to just e to the pi times i is negative one. Usually you uh, rearrange that and you get e to the pi times i plus one equals zero. And you can make a, a case that uh, that's like five of the most important numbers in math. You got e, pi, i, one, and zero, all in one equation. Um, uh, people really like that. It's like a very famous identity. It looks very cool. And if you don't know Euler's formula, it's like crazy to think that uh, that for some reason would equal zero. Uh, all right, so to do what we're gonna do, we need Euler's formula for sure. We need a couple other things. So first of all, we're gonna need properties of exponents, but really only one of the properties. We're gonna need to know that x to the a plus b is equal to x to the a uh, times x to the b. So that's a big one. We're gonna need to know that i squared is negative one, which hopefully we know. And then we're gonna need to know one other thing that's a little kind of like out there, but we need to know that the complex numbers a plus bi and c plus di are equal to each other if and only if a is equal to c and b is equal to d. So that's gonna be really important. So it's the real parts, a and c, have to be equal, and then the coefficients of i, so the imaginary parts, have to be equal as well, so b equals d. So we're gonna use all of that um, to arrive at some formulas. So let's see how that's done. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna let theta be equal to a plus b. And then we're gonna go back and use Euler's formula. So we're gonna find e to the i instead of theta, it's e to the i quantity a plus b. And then that's going to be equal to, we're still just straight using Euler's formula, so it's cosine of whatever the argument is, so cosine of a plus b, plus i times sine of the argument, so sine of a plus b. So we have that. Now everything we're gonna do is gonna be really focused on the left-hand side of this, and we're just gonna kinda leave the right-hand side for a little while. Um, okay, we're gonna just work on that left-hand side. So for starters, um, I know that this is definitely equal to e to the i a plus i b, I mean that makes sense. And now we're going to kind of reverse that property of exponents. So e to the i a plus i b is the same as e to the i a times e to the i b, right? Because same base, we would add the exponents. So if we're adding exponents, we can kind of deconstruct it into uh, the same base with each of those exponents. Now what we'll do is uh, use Euler's formula again, right? I have e to the i a, e to the i b. Each of those can be represented with Euler's formula. So uh, this right here, the argument is a, so it's going to be cosine of a plus i sine of a. And then we go back and we look at this part, and that's just the argument is b. So cosine of b plus i sine of b. And it looks like it's going to be kind of uh, annoying maybe, but uh, this is actually just multiplying like two binomials. So this looks to me like uh, the quantity a plus b times the quantity c plus d. And that's actually what we're gonna do. So we'll take it a step at a time. So it's, uh, I'm gonna take cosine of a and multiply it by cosine of b, so like first times first. Okay, so we get cosine a, cosine b. And then I'm gonna take uh, cosine a and multiply it by i sine of b. And uh, I'm gonna write that down. So it's i cosine of a and then sine of B. As I go through these, I'm always just gonna put uh, the thing that goes with A first, usually alphabetized by 
the variable when you have multiple trig functions. It's kind of weird that you do that, but uh, in my experience, that's what you do. Okay, so now I need to take uh, this i sine of a and multiply it by cosine of b. So it's gonna be i sine a cosine b. And then take i sine of a and multiply it by i sine of b, which is going to give me an i squared because it's i times i, and then just sine a sine b. So that's where the i squared part of this is gonna come in. So if I rewrite this, uh, I'm gonna rewrite it so that uh, everything that doesn't have an i is gonna come first. So this does not have an i, so let's write that. So cosine a, cosine b. And then I see uh, i times something, i times something, i squared times something. So i squared is actually negative one, right? So uh, that term doesn't actually have an i in front of it. It's actually minus, and then whatever's left, so sine a, sine b. So that's all the real stuff from there. Um, now I need to deal with the uh, things that have i's as coefficients. So I'm actually just gonna write down uh, i, so plus i, and then uh, quantity. So we got this thing, so, uh, and then we have that thing. So there's a cosine a sine b and a sine a cosine b. I'm gonna start with sine a cosine b uh, just because I know how uh, you're gonna end up writing these things in the end. So that's, that's just a choice. It doesn't actually make a difference. So I have sine a cosine b plus cosine a sine b. And we're actually pretty much done here. Uh, this thing that I just wrote is a crazy looking complex number where the real part is cosine a cosine b minus sine a sine b. And then the coefficient of i is sine a cosine b plus cosine a sine b. So if I think all the way back to where I started, right, like uh, from here to here to here, all the way up to there, all of that is equal to cosine of a plus b plus i times sine of a plus b. I have two complex numbers, so I know that they're equal to each other, which means the real parts must be equal and the imaginary parts must be equal. Specifically, it means that cosine of a plus b must be equal to cosine a cosine b minus sine a sine b. So let me write that down. And then also sine of a plus b, which is the coefficient of i, must be equal to this other stuff sine a cosine b plus cosine a sine b. So let me write that down. So we have that, and those are our formula. Those are the sum formulas um, for tree, for sine and cosine. So sine of a plus b, cosine of a plus b. Um, so let's box it. You definitely wanna memorize those. You're gonna use them a lot. Uh, I hope you found this helpful, and good luck.